likes his daily dip. Today we take a dip into the musical legacy that is the Tall Dwarfs. The duo that is Chris Knox and Alec Bathgate have been making music together since 1977. Now Merge Records is about to release Unraveled, 1981 to 2002. It's a 4LP box set complete with a bonus booklet. The songs on Unraveled were curated by Alec Bathgate, who also designed the box set packaging. Here's Alec now to tell us more about this highly anticipated piece of Kiwi music history. Louis likes his daily dip. So tell me uh, how this whole box set thing started. Because uh, uh, it, it's a pretty big deal uh, coming from Merge and all that. Yeah. And, you know, it, well, the, the Merge connection happened through Instagram. So I, I started an Instagram page a couple of years ago. And I saw that uh, Matt McCohen, who's in the band Super Chunk and also one of the owners of Merge, yep. was following my Instagram page. Um, and around about that same time, um, Alexander Turnbull Library had started their Flying Nun project. I don't know if you're aware of that. So A little bit, yeah. Yeah, so they're, Vaguely. they're um, <laughs> collecting tapes from various Flying Nun bands and archiving them, preserving them, doing high-res digital transfers from the tapes. So right. they had taken all our... Chris had kept all our recordings, all our master tapes. So they went to the library and they, they started this process of digitizing everything. So I had access to all those files. So, uh -huh. and then the other thing that happened was the last year flying and had their 40th anniversary and the Christchurch Art Gallery uh, did an exhibition called House of Popping, the Art of Flying Nun. Um, and I, because I work as a graphic designer in my day job, I designed the catalogue, the exhibition, and also some of my artwork and Chris's artwork was in that exhibition. So I took me down through this process of um, kind of digging out old, old artwork. And I think too, because I was doing this Instagram page, I'd started sort of delving back in to my archive and just finding old photos and posters and things. So, so I guess all, all these things kind of were sort of happening in parallel. Uh, but yeah, I contacted Matt around the idea of doing a tall dwarf box set uh, because I'd previously done one with the clean. Um, right. And I thought it'd be really nice to, to do a tall dwarf version of that. So, um, yeah, that was kind of how it all began. Very cool, very cool. So it's it seems almost, uh, I don't know, sure, having all this stuff digitized, mm. because we all know how it started. It was very undigital, yeah. yeah. <laughs> very lo-fi, very yeah. analog. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was really important to me that the, the vinyl pressing sounded good. Uh, yep. And... So I went through, well, I guess kind of managed the process of having, sequencing the tracks for the box set, having them mastered, and then having test pressings done from the pressing plant in, in the US. So I, right. I've been kind of carefully checking thing, everything along the way, because I just, but well, I'm a record collector, and I know that often with modern, Pressing, so you can they can be quite disappointing. I think that yep. yeah, it's a bit, bit hit and miss these days. So I it was really important to me that the, the records sound sound good. So, uh, and what kind of things are you listening for in the test pressing? Ah, uh, just just good quality pressing. So just kind of low, um, you know, no, no, yeah, just a nice, um, quiet pressing, flat right. vinyl. Um, yeah. No clicks or pops, because that stuff is gotcha, pretty gotcha. distracting. I think. Um, yep. Yeah. So I've been pretty careful with that to make. Sure. So the package is four LPs and a and a nice big booklet. <laughs> yeah. So it's, there's a slipcase. Um, there's two double gatefold sleeves. Right. Um, and a twenty-page booklet. 
the the two sleeves that you put together, right? Sorry, I, you, you put yeah, the yeah, booklet I, yes, together. I did. Yeah, I did the design, the packaging for it, um, and it's very well. It's, one of the things that sort of came out of doing the flying in exhibition was just. A lot of the work in that exhibition was from the 80s and predated um, computers being used for yeah. the design. And there was a really lovely quality to those, or those early record sleeves, because a lot of them were hand drawn. Sure. Um, and kind of just a cut and paste technique. Um, and it just kind of made me aware of, you know, how, how, the, the look of things had changed in, in the age of um, yeah. computers being used. And, just, and, and because a lot of the Tordorf's early records were done in that era, I, I wanted the packaging uh, to kind of capture some of that, that feel because I thought that will feel very kind of authentic and true to Tordorf. So, um, so a lot of the stuff I, I did, did by hand. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, there was the, on one level, I kind of had, had to design what it looked like, but there was also just sourcing a lot of the old posters and um, right. photographs and getting stuff. So did you have a concept in mind or were you just trying to find all the stuff and get as much in there as you can? How did you approach yeah, it? Yeah. Because you must have tons of stuff. Yeah. So I, it's, I've it's kept, 30 plus years of, or whatever yeah, it is. Of, I, I've <laughs> got boxes in my attic full of, <laughs> Because I just kept stuff, kept everything, um, my posters and what have you. And so I did quite a lot of photography, black and white photography back then. So I had had negatives of um, uh, stuff that had been shot. Um, it was kind of yeah. I, I I think there was a point where I was kind of wondering if I had taken on too much because initially it just seemed like a really good idea. But then it's yeah. a kind of reality where you actually start putting it together. Um, and also I had deadlines to work to because... Oh, yeah. Um, so there's, a, there's a, a kind of global backlog with getting vinyl pressed. Right, yeah. I've been hearing all about that. Yeah. <laughs> so before I'd even... I, very early on, Merge had booked in the pressing of the albums. Um so I was kind of working to this deadline of getting everything to them um, in the same yep. later with, the, with all the print stuff. Um, and yeah, initially, I mean, this is kind of typical of my process of graphic design, but I started off and didn't really know what I was going to do and didn't like anything I did initially. But and yeah, I just kept working away at it and, and over time it, started to come together um and i, mean, I was lucky I had, I had a lot to draw on because i could go back to our old artwork um yeah so actually the the cover for the slip case which was kind of black and white sort of op art pattern is something that chris had created for bay records way way back so i, I re repurposed that um yeah so yeah it was a long process so i i I think I've been working on it for it's well over a year, um, yeah. kind of in, in conjunction conjunction with doing my my day job. Uh, right, <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I mean, I'm, ple I'm pleased I've done it, but it, it was there was a lot more to it than yeah. I had anticipated. Yeah. But I hope that that for somebody buying the, the box set, they'll kind of appreciate. Yeah, I'm sure they will. <laughs> time that's gone into it because I, I wanted it to be something special because I kind of thought it was kind of a one-off thing. I can't imagine yeah. get a chance to do something like this again, and it's, it'll probably be the only um, kind of physical tore off object. I think so. In conjunction with announcing this, we've put all our, our whole back catalogs now available on, on streaming sites. So my mindset was that um, if somebody just wants the box set, then that gives them, you know, there's still a lot on there, there's 55 songs. Um, 
But if they want more, then everything else is is available to hear. Right, right, right. Yeah. So for you, what was it like emotionally, personally, going through all that stuff? I mean, you know, that's all. Yeah. Not... It was fine. It was fine, but it was it's quite weird, sort of being immersed <laughs> in the yeah. past in that way because, um, like the earlier stuff is you know it's forty years ago, so it's that's a really yeah. long time, and and the most recent is twenty years ago, and it, it's quite a long time ago. So, and yep, you know, so and so I'm looking at all these photos of Chris and I as as, <laughs> as young men, um, so. Yeah, so you do kind of reflect quite a bit on that. So, it, yeah, I, I know I hadn't really anticipated that, but it was kind of a bit of a, an emotional journey. Mm. Yeah. And did you spend much time revisiting the music at the same time? Mm. Yeah, well, I had to listen to everything, and I, I hadn't done that for a long time. Um, and really, so I'd been doing this... Um, there's a bio- biography being written about Chris's life, and right. I've been doing interviews for that, and that was sort of the prompt to actually go back and listen to our recordings. Right. I was having to talk through all those different records, and I, and I hadn't listened to them for a long time. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of an odd thing. I, I felt kind of resistant to it initially, but then the more I listened, I started to really enjoy it. And then, and then when I went, got to the stage of um, kind of condensing it down into the songs that are on the box set, um, I started to, kind of, started to kind of take this shape. Um, and yeah, I, I think I found, uh, so I think back when we were making those records, I didn't really listen to them once we'd finished recording because you know kind of a bit over it and um <laughs> i but I, I found that i've kind of gone back and listened to these songs just out of <laughs> just for the enjoyment of it um, yep 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 well, and, and i think it's just because you know so much time's elapsed that i can hear it hear them differently right yeah I think did you hear anything like a whole time different time, i think do you, hear, do you hear them differently now than you would have, say, 25 years ago? Yeah, I just think, well, I, 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 one thing I, that really um, I was kind of just impressed by Chris, really. Um, yeah. By his singing and his, his delivery of the songs and his lyrics, which are amazing. I Yeah. I, I guess I knew that back then. Although I feel like it just yeah. kind of took up for granted because um, it had, you know, we'd been together and the enemy and Toy Love um, prior to Tall Dwarf. So I was just kind of used to being with him and the kind of experience of um, writing songs with him. I don't know. It was just, I, I think, you know, with hindsight, I look back and go, you know, it was quite amazing what he did. And I, in putting the box set together, I uh, had to transcribe the lyrics for the songs. And oh. I don't think I ever read them before. Like I, <laughs> and some of they're just so good. Uh, and, yeah. and and I rec- and I can remember when we'd be working on things and. Um, Look, he never laboured over writing the lyrics. They were all, all, he would just sit down with a pen and paper and just yeah. just quickly. There was the, yeah, there was no sort of you know rethinking or crafting them. He just wrote them and and they would sing them. Um, and right. yeah, <laughs> um, so so that yeah, I guess I, that gave me a bit of an appreciation of, and I think just. Just hearing, I mean, I think we're kind of an odd band in that, just because of the way we worked, of just being two people. Yep. Um, and you kept moving around. <laughs> uh, we either recorded in 
Auckland or Christchurch, and it was just dependent on who could <laughs> who could travel. So I'd go up and right. stay with Chris, and we'd often record at his house. But if he was down here, so for example, um, Louis likes his daily dip, which was that was our second EP, and the first one that came out on Flying Nun. Um, Chris had come down with Doug Hood to record the Dunedin double. Right. And so we kind of took advantage of that to, to do some recording ourselves. Um, sometimes we would play live and work some recording around that. And, and often that right. would finance it because we didn't have any money. And <laughs> if I had to get up to Auckland, I wouldn't have been able to afford an airfare. So we would play and that would kind of cover the costs of travel and you know and buying some reels of tape so what is it do you think that kept the two of you working together all that time because i mean both of you could have been working with anybody yeah There's a massive scene going yeah. on well, I think and we, you weren't even in the same place together yeah yet. here um i think we just like each other <laughs> <laughs> We're good friends that's the best answer yeah i think, I think that we'd like, we'd like seeing each other I think we'd, we'd, like I mentioned, you know, we'd been in the enemy and toil up together and we'd had those sure. years where we were together all the time and seeing each other every day. Um, I think we really enjoyed the process of recording together. Um, right. Because that was, that was really, enjoy it was enjoyable to do that because... Um, because we just uh, it was just a matter of being together in the same place and and then just working something up on the right. spot um and it, so, it's, right. so it's quite easy in, in that respect like we didn't like when we played in bands um you know you had to kind of write your songs and then practice them and go out and play them live yeah. whereas with the total approach it was very spontaneous and really just kind of making something up on the spot but that, but right. that for us was quite exciting, right? Because you, you know, you and go and did the did the work the the creative process change at all over the years? Did roles change, or really, did, yeah. was it just very natural? No, I, I get the feeling you didn't overthink it. No, we didn't. And it just it just pretty much we just carried on the way we started because we discovered when Chris first got his four track that um, we could make music that, that we're really happy with very simply and that's pretty much how, how we carried on right, right. Yeah. so is there stuff in the can that we haven't heard yet is there still more stuff out there or what's so. the status of the of the legacy yeah, of the catalog i feel like that's enough <laughs> that's <laughs> enough without adding any more to it because because i think there's i forget the exact number but there were, there's over 200 songs Right from the back catalogue, and I know there were, there were interesting things amongst the tapes of Chris's that went to the Alexander Turnbull Library, and I haven't sort of delved into that. I think I've, I've been so immersed in getting this box set together, and I decided when I was working on it not to I decided not to include any unreleased stuff because I just right yeah I just wanted. To, be to draw on from stuff that had actually been released. We didn't have a lot of outtakes because generally the song you hear is the only version of the song because we were recording it as we did it. So, right, right, right. so there's yep. very few that, maybe a couple of things that we had a couple of goes at. Um, I know some live stuff. There was a reel of, of Tall Ross live from some time in the 80s. And I remember Chris at the time talking about releasing it, but I, I haven't gone back and listened to it. So I don't know if it's kind of right. <laughs> worthy of a release or not. And I know it was kind of various kind of enemy and toy love stuff amongst his collection. So, so there could be a lot of things that, that might, might appear. Right. Yeah. Right. So do you know, I'm, I assume you've had some kind of communication with Chris. What does he think of all this? Do you know? Um, I have, I haven't had as much communication as I'd like because of COVID and 
lockdown. Yeah. I would have been traveling up to see him while I was working on it. Um, but right. That was my plan, but, but that never happened. So uh, I've shared stuff with him and, and got positive <laughs> response. So um, <laughs> that's good. I think, so my plan is, is I haven't seen uh, the finished product yet, but I'm expecting to receive those in the next few weeks. So once right. I it's not being released till August. Or what, August, August but I'm told I have copies in mid July, so, uh, cool. so my plan is to go up and take Chris's copies up, and I'm hoping he might be able to sit and listen to some of it together. Hope he likes it. I think, I, I think it's yeah. I'm, I'm happy with what I've put together. I think it's gives a pretty good idea of what we we're about. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. cool. Mm. So once it's out and you've got this kind of out of the, your system, mm. you, you mentioned you have a, your your day job. Yeah. Musically, are you doing anything else? Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I, so I did a solo album two years ago called Phantom Dots, which was just um, an all instrumental album, right. um, which I, re- I realize is kind of niche and it's not going to appeal to everyone, <laughs> but I just kind of did it for my own enjoyment because it was fun to make. And um, I, so I reissued that on vinyl last year with my two other solo albums. Uh, and then I got kind of immersed in this tall dwarf thing. So yeah, that's kind of kept me from, from doing anything. So I, yeah, I'm not really sure. I, yeah. I mean, I still play music all the time and I'm still, you know, completely, I mean, I've always, just been obsessed by music, like listening to yeah. music or reading about music. Um, it's kind of the only thing I'm interested in. <laughs> if, <laughs> if no other hobbies or there's, I, there's nothing else that I can do really. That's that's kind of yep. it for me. So well, I mean, if you if you look back, I mean, you've got the enemy, you've got Toy Love, yeah. and Tall Dwarfs that you were all involved. You were involved in all of those things. Yeah. And I mean, to me. As an outsider, I moved here in '94. Mm-hmm. To me, that was the beginning of New Zealand music. Right. <laughs> you know, I know there was stuff that happened yeah. before, and yeah. and some of that's great, but it feels like that was the beginning. Uh, yeah, I think so. I grew up through '60s and '70s, so I was starting to get interested in music and learning to play the guitar, sort of in the early '70s, and yeah. I don't recall there being a lot happening musically in New Zealand at the time. There were a lot of cover bands, I mean, the exception right. of Split Ends, um, yeah. who, you know, I was a huge fan when I was like 15 or 16, around the time of Mental Notes, I saw sure. Play Live a couple of times around then. So, and, and Chris, well, I, know, I found out, you know, Chris was also a huge fan, I'd been to those same shows, so... Um, yeah, they were quite an inspiration, I think, even though, I don't know, I don't know if, there's the kind of aspects of the tall horse that I, that I think kind of, um, yeah, have some connection to the, the, those, you know, early split ends. Right. I don't know if anyone else yeah. hears that. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, yeah, maybe it's just a kind of general kind of weirdness. Um, that's one of the things that I liked about them at the time because yeah. New Zealand yeah. in the seventies was such a kind of conservative place that they, yeah, I can imagine they were just you know really stuck out as being something different. Man, when you guys did your thing, it must have just blown people away because I mean to be especially in that perspective right I think well it, I think the, the enemy I mean that that period was really exciting for all of us and yeah well, because punk rock was happening yep it was just a really exciting time and none of us had played in bands before and so it's kind of it's kind of thr- thrilling to be the band and sure you know I was lucky to have met Chris, because you know he was such a, um, you know, such a strong 
personality and kind of stage yeah. persona <laughs> and you know huge confidence and kind of energy make to make things happen um yep you know like i recall this is the first time the enemy played was in november 1977 um we'd been asked and we'd only been together a few weeks and we'd written a few songs but I wasn't re- I wasn't ready to go on stage yet, but we got offered this gig. And <laughs> like, yeah, sure, we'll do it. And so, right. um, and that was kind of very typical of him of just, you know, his sort of energy would kind of make things happen. Right. You know, like, so. That's what punk rock's all about. Yeah, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Well, I can't wait to see when you actually when we actually have the box set in, in the four LPs, yeah. the booklet, and we can. I think it'll be. Look at I it. it'll be nice. I, I, I'm sure yeah, it will be. Cheers. Yeah, I yeah. I want it to be because as a collector myself, you know, it's really nice when you get something that's had, had some care put yeah. into it. Yep. Um, yep. And I just thought, well, you know, it's kind of a one-off chance, um, and I kind of wanted it to be part of the reason for. Approaching merge was just to to get it sort of out in the world. Yep, yep. Based in the US and you know, they have really good distribution, and I thought it'll probably get to a lot of people that haven't heard of us. Yep, yeah. Yep. And I thought there was some worthiness in the music that it, you know, that it um, deserved to to exist out in the wider still world. finding an audience it's yeah. amazing yeah well it's funny <laughs> and a new audience <laughs> i well yeah i kind of had this feeling like we were just going to fade and obscurity and disappear so I kind of <laughs> <laughs> wanted to go hey, you know this is there's something here that's Very hopefully good. worth having a listen to yeah. yep well, thank you for spending time talking to me about it all. I can't wait to, to hear it and see it. And it's going to oh, be very cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hopefully Chris will like it when he sees I it too. So. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, I, he's seen all the, the artwork and he was really happy. Right. So um, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Very good. Mm. All righty. Well, thank you. And uh, nice we'll see you. Yeah. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.